Happy Saturday, everybody. Let's get to the four games we got coming up this weekend with Stanford Steve. All right, so Steve's here. We got four games. We can really hone in on them. Keep it simple. Let's just give out winners here, Steve. That sounds good. Start with winners and just keep winning and don't even think about the other side. Are you drinking a grape soda on Friday morning or on Thursday morning? Is that what day it is? No, it's these new bubbly sparkling waters. Uh -huh. Very, very tasty. Big sparkling water guy here. You got my hopes up. I was. Well, what's your favorite? Is it bubbly now? Spindrift? Uh, they have the most flavor. No doubt. Spindrift. Yep. I'm not a big LaCroix guy. I don't like. Uh, okay. I don't, know, I don't know, Lloyd. The French are assholes. Um, all they, right. Let's see. <laughs> let's get to the. Let's get to the lines here. They have some co funny combinations. So, how did you do last weekend? Well, we ended up splitting. We lost a vig on the unders. Uh, I said I was taking every under, and I just stayed true. I just thought after the barrage of points we've seen this year and, you know, our guy Hanson on the red zone and, and our guy Big Cat going with the Hanson every week, it felt like all these points were going to be scored. And I just felt like I thought the defenses in most of those matchups were – conducive to, to help in the under. I thought, you know, I, we've talked about the saints offense all year. I thought Chicago matched up pretty well. I knew Trubisky wasn't going to overdo things. Love that under. Right. Uh, I thought Pittsburgh would come out with a better plan playing all their guys against Cleveland, who they played the week before being a division opponent, their third time playing and the first play of the game happens, and you know it's not going under. Right. So there's a lot of things you had to overcome. Uh, you know, we got lucky with Buffalo and Indy with, you know, winning that by a half point. The pick six by Russell Wilson, which you'd never really grown accustomed to right then. I think that made the score 13 -3. But at that point, you so knew you know the Russell was dead. Yeah, you knew, you knew Russ was coming right back because they couldn't waste any time. Uh, and then the nightcap was a surprise. I, I, I was surprised yeah. how Washington got pushed around. Um, so, you know, we ended up, you know, splitting that. Um, and, you know, we're on to this week. Uh, I will say I'm way more fired up to watch these matchups. This is the weekend. We talked last week about this is the weekend where – the NFL is on an island all by itself with the quality of product that they can put out there for, I mean, let's face it, it's a total 48 hours because you're getting juiced up all day Saturday. And then Sunday starts early enough where it carries you and then it's midnight Sunday night and you're like, wow, that was incredible. Dude, last week I just felt like you, you, you know – um, when you have one too many plates of dessert, you just, you feel it. You're like, no, it wasn't enjoyable no anymore, it, it, you know? And so maybe they ruined wild card weekend. Maybe they didn't. I think time will tell. It'd be a lot like the college football playoff. Maybe we're sitting here in like six, seven years and we're saying there ain't so many one score games and it's just yeah. it's too many bad quarterbacks. This, this round here and these matchups are really good. And we'll start with really the first good. one that probably everybody's like, I, I would think most people are most excited about Baltimore Buffalo as are we. Yep. Yep. I would think be, behind that it's probably Browns chiefs. I would think behind that it might be saints bucks or Rams Packers, depending on how you, you prioritize watching football. I actually am putting Rams Packers near the top. Now I know Jared Goff probably affects the watchability of that game, <laughs> But come on, this is going to be gorgeous. I mean, this is strength on strength. You've got the number one offense, number one defense. Usually when you've got a defense that's number one in total um, passing and uh, in scoring, they're going to the Super Bowl, right? I mean, that, that's yeah. been, that was on everybody's next-gen stats sheet this week. <laughs> yeah. But this feels different because of the elephant in the room. That's Jared Goff. And I've said all week – I think if they had their choice, they'd, they'd start Walford, but mm -hmm. it doesn't look like they're going to have their choice. It didn't look good for him uh, with that neck injury. No, it, you, you said it on uh, sports center the other night with Scott that they had a chance with both guys last week and, and McVay chose Walford. So right there, it tells me 
um, what I need to know about the McVay golf relationship, trust factor, whatever you want to call at it at this point. Yeah. At this point, they've been through a lot together and, and absolutely know, like, you know, there, there is loyalty in the game and there's, you know, they paid this guy, they've been to a Super Bowl together, but things have regressed. And it, you know, I, if I'm the Rams this weekend, I actually don't feel too bad about my chances because I think they can get the outside run game going. I think they can get the run game going. We've seen green Bay uh, at times struggle against it. They jumped uh, Tennessee Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I don't feel like that was a game where it was about Derrick Henry imposing his will in the playoffs last year, green Bay had trouble stopping the run, especially mm-hmm. off tackle. So cam Akers, the game he had last week, what they're suited to do personnel wise. If I'm green Bay, I just make uh, Jared Goff beat us subsequently. And you know, that 45 yarder to cup last week was a prayer. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to hit on plays like that to be competitive here, but you got to pick your spots. Um, and so I think one of the most interesting things that me and Ryan were talking about, I was on Ryan's pod, uh, is this cat and mouse game Mm pre-snap with, (laughs) with the secondary and what they're doing there in, in LA. They're the best in the business. They disguise, they get out of cover two stuff, the shells, and then they're in a, a whole bunch of different places. Um, and it's, and it's a guy that you can't blitz and you can't fool on the other end in, in Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, a couple things on this one. Rodgers has been unbelievable. He's six and all against the spread in his career against the Rams. Uh, all five of play Packers playoff games since 2016 have gone over, which I scares me a little bit. And the most motivating thing to me is, now, we know McVay is a motivated guy. We got the LaFleur, uh, LaFleur McVay coaching tree thing going on and what you want. Mm-hmm. But this is the biggest, second biggest law underdog McVay's ever been as a head coach. And like I said, I think, and you said, I think they can run the ball um, and, and, and keep, you know, golf in check. I expect a lot of that mesh stuff across the middle against Green Bay and how aggressive they want to be. I will say this, Chris. When you're talking about defensive units and offensive units, the Green Bay defensive unit, to me, has the most to prove this weekend. Come out and just shut it down. Right. And people, I think, will, will, will feel a lot better about you. We know you have home field. I think this is a huge step for Green Bay because yeah. I really like the matchup, no matter who wins on the other side, as long as they can get past this. But I do like – the Rams plus the points, it's not going to be pretty. No. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be pretty. And the worst thing is, is you know how Green Bay loves to jump out on teams, and that's what scares me about the Rams because we know they can't come from behind with the way Goff is, you know, limited, you know, with the thumb. I mean, he's got three pins in his, his But thumb. they do, yeah, no doubt about and, it. And, and they and they defend the deep ball well, though, so that's yep. one shot. I mean, the deep ball is like a wash for these guys because L.A. defends it well. And, uh, and Green Bay has been really, um, really good at taking shots. So I, I would take that out of it. And I would look at this game being, can you protect Aaron Rodgers? Can you protect Aaron Rodgers? And can on the other side, you get the run game going? Um, you know, if you can protect Aaron Rodgers, you know, all these numbers about play action pass and how bad the Rams are against it relative to how good they are against everything else. Again, like next gen stats, I love them. Uh, but the context is telling me that Green Bay has been great uh, mm-hmm. with shots off play action. Mm-hmm. Um, but those stats, they compile with a healthy David Bakhtiari. You know, they weren't mm-hmm. playing Aaron Donald. You're not turning your back to Aaron Donald to her, to fake, you know, to play fake every play. You're not turning your back to um, Leonard Floyd, who's been really good at running the hump. He's going to be there. How about Fox? Yep, Fox has been playing well, so... <laughs> And Brockers, we never forget about Brockers, but he's he's the he's the that's guy. That's my man. These guys are good at converting in play action, and yeah. you're going to have a guy deep in a Leonard Floyd. So if you set deep and it's a big shot play action, you got to contend with him. And then if it's a timing thing, you're not going to have a lot of time because there's no better dominant inside rusher that's mm-hmm. converting quicker from run to pass than Aaron Donald. And so, like, good luck. I mean, like, yeah, the play action stuff, it all sounds good. And you got aggressive linebackers. And if you got any complaint about Jalen Ramsey's game, it's that he's aggressive. I would, I, 
I would feel pretty good about the Rams um, altogether defensively. I don't think they have a real weakness against these guys. I like the under as well, and I'm with you. I might buy the half point to get it to seven because buying points pays off. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got it. You got to do it. Um, Yeah, I I think it's a great matchup because we know what Green Bay – uh, you know, the, I still think they have enough um, doubt out there. Yeah. If that, if that, if that's the right word. Uh, and I know that they're really confident in themselves and they should be man. Like, but when I, um, I was listening to somebody, the strength, if you look at uh, one of the um, analytic numbers, strength of schedule, the Rams are like nine and the Packers are like 31. Packers haven't played anybody. Packers have beaten one now, team pretty much, except, and that was the saints earlier in the year. Right. I mean, and the, be, the Titans Tampa too. smoked them. Yeah, but I will say this. It's not Green Bay's fault that their division sucked this year. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. You know, and, like and that's – so when you're looking at that, like, you know, you know, the, the, the I don't know what the numbers are going to say, like about the Cardinals, like they fell off as much as anybody this year and, you know, the Rams get two games against them. It, it all balances out. They're both playing each other here. Yeah. I'll take the points, uh, but it's not going to be pretty. You right. really got to hope the Rams can play from ahead like they did last week in Seattle. Let's go to New Orleans, uh, Tampa. I've said all week, um, and I, it's, it's one of these games where – when it came down, mm-hmm. I didn't think I had a lean mm-hmm. at this point in the, the week. I'm leaning Tampa. Uh, and I, I think you're on new Orleans. Yeah. I, I can explain myself. You go, you go first. I, I, like, Tam- I like Tampa. I like Tampa. There, there's so many things that are different about this matchup than the, t- the times they played early in the season. Gronk's a different guy. Sure, he's not getting targeted a lot, but he's blocking he's his said, ass off. I was going to say he's set that edge on your ass. <laughs> yeah, and the possessions that the possessions that are the, the 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 touches that he's getting um, are are going to be big this weekend. And you look at the middle of the field for the Saints. You know, Malcolm on Gronk is something some people might consider that a concern. You know, it's not a great matchup. You know, for mm-hmm. size reasons and that sort of thing. Um, you're you're looking at a defense that got so much better than when Quan Alexander showed up in town. Mm-hmm. He's not there anymore. And the Chicago no. week, I don't know anything about your defense after that. So I think that's a big question mark. Also, <laughs> AB has come along, different team, and you're getting Devin White back. I doubt that Washington has m- as much success last week if you have Devin White on the field. Agree in all phases. I will say this, that the the New Orleans numbers like in this matchup – and when you're looking at over-unders, I mean, there's a couple things that I got from research that I definitely want to get out there. And the idea that New Orleans has won and covered five straight meetings in this matchup. Brady's never gone 0-3 against the spread or straight up against one single team in a single season in his career, which right. is just stupid. It's um, but when you look at this, and I know A.B. played – you know, Gronk's been playing, but it still feels like to me that Tampa's a different team when the last time they got smoked on that Sunday night, right. um, you know, in Tampa. Because when I look at Tampa and it feels like they've they've been this like hybrid of Bruce Arians offense and then Brady has put his foot down and gotten his stuff into that mix. So it's this huge conglomerate of offense, which right. matchups, there was this point there where they got rid of the run game. And now when you look at the saints, what makes them so good is I think they're good enough to take away your top two or match up as good as mm-hmm. your top two yeah. options are in the pass game. But that's where Brady is, is, is an MF for here because he's got Brown as the third option here. Okay, I thought Brait was spectacular lining up in the slot last week against Washington, who's not bad in the right. secondary. But with that's your now you're now you're going four options, and you still have Gronk lined up down in a yes. three point stance if you want. Yes. So now, I mean, Brady's going to split you out, and it just gets back to those old days of the old Edelman cross routes and Amendola and all that stuff. So Tampa's going to be a handful. They are going to throw every single thing at the Saints here. On the, uh, towards the Saints' defense, they look so, yeah, they look so much more like a, a Brady offense. Yes, with a lot more speed and talent yes. in the perimeter too. No offense to your guys. All no, right, shit, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> don't, um, don't tell Jules. <laughs> no, I was going to say Jules and, and, and Dola, but they they're still kicking. Yeah, um, they are. So to me, it's 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 
One thing that really is messing with me this week is I thought, and I think I said this um, on Sunday night when we taped, I thought everybody would jump on Tampa because of what they saw, you know, recency yeah, bias. I was surprised by that when you said I, that. I, I, because it's Brady, man, and Tampa actually did look good offensively, and everybody loves offense, and the Saints just are the same thing every week offensively to me. Yeah. Uh, so it's just it, it really has has you know messed with my mind this week. Messing with my and, mind, <laughs> and it's just crazy. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that New Orleans is seven and one against the spread outright when Michael Thomas plays uh, this season. And I don't care who you are, and I've been as critical of Breeze as anybody. But when you don't have your top guy, like that's 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 not that. I mean, I'm not saying it's not fair, but like it's not fair to judge what his numbers were. And yes, they still got the job done. They had a shot for the one seed the last week of the season. So to me, the sustainability, we know the heartbreak that has cost the saints the last three seasons in the playoffs. Yeah. We know this is it. I mean, you look at the cap, you look at what breeze has said, you look at what NBC has said about wanting breeze to come right. to him. So this is the last stand. Um, it's the last game Sunday, you know, of the weekend, it's just tough. I, I still go with the under because I think I don't think New Orleans can win a high scoring game. I really don't. And I think they know that too. And what they've done to Tampa's offense in the past, I'm not saying they're going to shut them down to three points like they did the last time they played, but I go under here uh, because I think there's just that much, there's that much talent um, on the defensive side to keep these offenses in check. And it's just going to be an ultimate chess match. And, you know, it could be, you know, it could be a 17, 13 game and that team that's down four has the ball last. It could be one of those. So um, it's, it's a tough one to handicap. There's so many great minds involved in this game, uh, but I'll, I'll go under here. It's, it feels like such a 27, 24 game and the, the total is like 51 and a half. So yeah. if I had to, I guess, I guess I'm going to go over because after last weekend, I should not trust my instincts this year in the playoffs. I'm going to go <laughs> over. I was thinking under, I'll go with the bucks because it's just how different they're going to be. And buy it to three and a half. The, yeah. But no, don't buy it at three and a half. I got no problem with a push. All right. So Baltimore, Buffalo, mm -hmm. uh, Buffalo is giving three. Uh, I got them at two and a half earlier this week. Um, okay. And I would suggest you get Buffalo. I feel good about them. I think it's going to come down to them in the red zone. I like the under. I know mm -hmm. you like the over. Yeah. I do lean to the over. And there's a couple things here. We could have a snow game. Give me, give me these guys. Give me the speed that these guys have on the outside uh, throwing the ball. Here's the one thing I do like the over. All right. I love this because of the inexperience these guys have in the playoffs. Okay. I understand they've both been there. This is a multiple times going there, but here's the deal. And I love them because they're going to make mistakes. Okay. Both of these guys are going to make mistakes because both defenses have the ability to frustrate the other. Okay. And I understand that, but both these guys are risk takers. All right. But when I say they're both going to make mistakes, I think it's going to be turnovers. And that's why I think I lean towards the over because I think these turnovers are going to be are going to be huge yeah. momentum builders. Well, if we, um, if we get snow, I might be with you in your school of thought. OK. Um, the other thing is I'm fascinated by the Ravens secondary against Stefan Diggs. Uh, him being a Baltimore, uh, you know, a Maryland guy. I can't imagine the woofing that's going to be going on with that matchup. So I'm really fired up for that. But the other one is the Bills against the run game of the Ravens. Now, last year they played, and I thought both defenses did a good job of like keeping job. both quarterbacks in check. But now Baltimore, if you go back and watch last week, they've like kind of flipped the script, Chris. Like now Dobbins with his speed, he's the outside speed zone guy, and now Lamar's hitting everything downhill. So now if they want to, they could flip that up whatever one they want to do with the H back and they can run counter whatever way. But now it's really tough because now you've got to stay balanced. you got to keep contain outside and your inside guys really got to be good with how they're reading things and where their leverage is and being multi-gap guys. So I like the, I think there's a couple wrinkles. Both guys will have enough wrinkles. Um, love, obviously uh, both head coaches have, have enough pedigree that I love both really fired up for it, but I would lean bills here and I would lean over I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do on the game for you. I'm going to go bills. Nice. I love it, dude. I, I yeah, I got the bills. I think it's going to come down to red zone because I think the Ravens will run the ball. 
Um, you know, whether you load the box, we, you got the light box, uh, w- pick your poison. I think they're going to run the football. And I think one of the biggest things is like the bills gave up a lot of yards last, last week, a lot of production, but they kept the points down relatively speaking. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I, I just think we're going to end up in, in situations where we look at this and if the Ravens go one, one of four in the red zone, they're losing this football game. No if they doubt. go three or three or four, or four or four in the red zone, they're winning this game. I believe the Bills have enough in that matchup in a constricted field situation to get it done. Uh, yeah, give me Buffalo, and uh, I'll take the under unless it snows. Okay, uh, uh, one one more thing. Yeah. Huge injury, I thought, for Zach Moss uh, for yeah, Buffalo. Yeah. He was, he was really getting it going. So the Buffalo run game, if Buff, if Baltimore can make Buffalo one dimensional, we know how that works in the playoffs when, you know, you're better defensively, obviously, cause you can defend one thing better than the other. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you saw him carted off. That was like in a game where Josh was like their whole run run offense. Yeah. So yeah. it's only going to get tougher and for them to beat these guys, I mean, this is going to have to be a Josh Allen masterpiece. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he's got to play really well for them to win. This is going to be a, a great game. Um, I will. I will also say, sorry to cut in, good. is Buffalo feels like that last week was the game where they just needed to get by. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. you know that could be that could set them off now as they ascend. Whereas Baltimore. I mean, you, John Harbaugh says it's the biggest win of his career. Yeah, like that's, that, a, that's that, a big. Like you could tell how much the locker room wanted that. Now you got to get it back up, and this is a totally different animal now that you got to get ready for because there's going to be stuff flying from all over the place with Josh Absolutely. Allen behind center. So it's Absolutely. it's it's fascinating, but I think Baltimore is going to you know stand. I mean, no defense is going to change what they're done all year in the playoffs, especially this. And they do have familiarity playing last year. So it, it, it's, it's totally the reason why um, it's my favorite matchup of the weekend. Absolutely. Browns chiefs. Um, could this be the blowout? The, the line is 10. Well, I'm sure everybody's on the over. Mm. I hope you got on it when it was down a little bit. I don't know at 57. I don't know. That's great call. Tennessee was 54 last week. You were all over that under. Um, you obviously had a lot more high octane uh, involved in this game. Yeah, I honestly think about the Chiefs and not winning multi-score games to end the season. I also think about resting everybody week 17 and having the week off. And how do they come out? This is an, uh, uh, this is, I'm not a big live gambler, Chris. Okay. I, I try and put the phone down when I'm watching these games. I'll pick it up, you know, at court, end of the quarter, halftime, to just to check the lines. What? But if this is a slow start, and that under does come, the live under it does over. come down. I, I, I would think to take the, the over here, knowing what you have to play with. Because I will say this: Stefanski's coming back in the mix. I thought Alex Van Pelt was phenomenal last week. There was a little lull. We talked about it. That's where you're going to lose your play caller. You know, when it's is the second quarter and, and, and you go off script. But Cleveland knows they are not good against the pass. They mm-hmm. suck against tight ends. Kelsey's going to go crazy. So I think Cleveland knows they have to keep the foot on the gas. I think they have enough to keep uh, to, to, to cover. So if I was going to take a side, I would take Cleveland here. Yeah, I like Cleveland first half for sure, depending on what you, okay. can, where you can get that at. Um, I like Cleveland for the game. Um, and as I said, I, I, I would take the over up to, you know, depending on where you're getting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, at DraftKings, it's 57 and a half, uh, but I would take it up to like 55. Um, so I'd probably be on the under, but I probably wouldn't play that total at 57 and a half. I, yeah, give me, the, give me the Browns, and at that number, I'll take the under. Um, and then I think the big key here is we just alluded to it, how you start. Mm-hmm. for both teams uh, because if there's one team you really don't want to end up down to um, you know we talk about that with Tennessee in the past and Tennessee was up you know 10 points last year against the Chiefs and they erased that quickly but the Browns are kind of they're molding into a pretty scary team offensively look what they did last week without Kevin um, and you know when you got Chubb and Hunt rounding into form right now 
it's scary. So don't find yourself, don't fuck around if you're Kansas City. I suspect that yeah. it's close yeah. in the first half, and then subsequently it's close in the second with the Chiefs pulling away and the Browns covering. Jarvis Landry, uh, I thought he was absolutely huge last week, and he's the guy this week. This is why um, you bring him in to move the chains on the road. Uh, whatever the Chiefs say their fans are letting in as a number-wise, it's going to be freaking quadruple it because I still can't believe these numbers that they're saying are in the stadium. And if you watch the game and you're like, holy shit, that's 6,000 right. people? There's no right. way. Uh, but fascinating matchup. Um, you know, Cleveland's probably playing with a little house money here uh, going against the champs. Uh, and I think the champs have waited all year to get to this point. Yeah. Now there's no more excuses. Uh, I do think when I, I look back, there have been some some injuries where, you know, to the receiving core that 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 slowed Mahomes down where he's trying to tell guys where to go and, 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 and they're, they might be misaligned. So no excuses. They know that. I mean, more than anything, they know that. Um, right. it, it's, it's, it's really, really fascinating. I, but to put it all in percent, I'm really excited for the AFC because of the the unknown um, of so many of the uh, teams, obviously the champs are in the AFC, but really, I think the AFC games dwarf the NFC games. I would agree. This here's to this weekend being better than the last one uh, <laughs> from an entertainment f- factor. And for your boy here, uh, let's get some wins here. I, I know that I gave out a, a winner or two on the show, but in real life, it wasn't the best weekend. So, uh, here's me telling you when it's ugly <laughs> guys <laughs> looking forward to the weekend, Steve. I, you, you really sound like it, Chris. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> and uh, Steve will not be on Sunday night um, for the Monday pod, but we'll catch you next week. Absolutely, bud. I'll talk All to right, you soon. Man. Thanks, man. Enjoy the weekend.